Um, my background, I'm from Rich, Virginia. Went to an all-boys military Catholic school. Uh, walked on East Carolina, played safety. Um, from there, was, health was a health education major, was going to get into high school coaching. Um, one of the guys, uh, Coach Shankweiler, kind of directed me to college. I got my first job, U.S. Coast Guard Academy, coaching outside backers. Um, was there for a year, then Trinity College, two years, coaching outside backers. Dartmouth College for about a spring, working with the O-line, restricted, you know, kind of doing everything they asked me to do, recruiting operations, everywhere in between. Um, then June of that same year, went to South Florida, played, uh, uh, who I played for, Jade for Skip Holtz. Um, was with the linebackers for a year, uh, did that. Then the staff got let go. I was lucky enough to be retained by Coach, Ta by, uh, Coach Taggart, then spent two years with Coach T and uh, spent two years with the D-line. Um, and that kind of started my pro end of my you know, progression, playing back end, going from linebackers to outside guys to D-line, um, brought me to the front play for two years in South Florida. I had a chance to coordinate at show one, like Coach said, was there four years, great place. In January 19, uh, Kennedy University of Maine, had the chance to coach the D-line. I've known Coach Ryan for a while now. He actually replaced me at Trinity. Um, that's kind of how I got to where I am now. It's a great place, guys. I'm excited to be there. Um, and uh, these people are awesome. Players are great. And kind of what I'm going to go over this clinic, guys, is just um, defensive line game fundamentals. I'm not really going to be hitting on, like, scheme, really. It's going to be all technique of the position, fundamentals that I think are important. And I do think to a certain extent can carry over from 4-3 to 3-4, whatever you guys do. Um, and we'll kind of focus on that, then have the drills, and then also some game to kind of see how it applies in game. Uh, who we are. Uh, we're, and guys, if you, like, if you guys have questions, like go, please stop me. Right now I'm just staring at a computer. Like some interactions are always great. So if you guys have questions, feel free to speak up. Let me know. Um, we're a base 4-3 team. We're a field under defense. We base out of quarters. And uh, really you're just going to see the front play. And that's what we'll be watching here on film. We have some first, second down, 3-3 three, three stacks type stuff. Also some 4-2-5 things we do. Then we get to third downs and long situations. We'll get to a four down and three down with our best pass rushers out there. But what you're going to see me focus on is mostly our four, three stuff and kind of how we teach that and along with some of the movements there. Um, then as a D-line guy, this is something that I've taken a lot of pride in the last year. And it's really when I first got there, I didn't understand it until I was in it. Um, there's been a great history. I know some of you guys have coached at Maine and been in the area for a long time of – you know, that's the black hole defense, but also within that, the D-line call ourselves the diamonds. And it's something that goes back. It's not a year-to-year -year thing. It's got legit history. Where I go to camps, clinics, I've talked to guys that played in this defense 20 years ago, and it's the same pride. And a lot of the techniques, the drills and things we talk about and do, um, they were doing in the 90s. And I take pride in that. I tell my guys about that. Um, and it's a big thing that I live up to, especially now we're, we're replacing four seniors. Um, and the things I talk about in that room, I don't give them a laundry list of things we got to do. I keep it real simple. Guys, fanatical effort. You got to go nonstop the whole way. You got to be enthusiastic, especially now. Our meetings right now, guys, we go at 8 o'clock in the morning. Our guys are getting out of bed. We're getting them up. But they got to find some juice. And we got to do that in meetings, indie, games, everything. You got to bring your own juice each day. Um, beyond that, we're going to stop the run. Every clinic you see our D.C. coach Ryan do, I can almost promise you to talk about stopping the run making teams one-dimensional. And uh, it starts up front, especially with those inside run games. I'm not obviously be physical. We want to be the most physical unit on the field every single Saturday, but also every day throughout the week. And that's something we got to pride ourselves on throughout the year. We're going to be showing lots of drills, guys. And this is nothing that you guys don't know. It's kind of, you know, you hear it all the time. Every drill's got to start, middle, and finish. Um, but I also believe in a couple other things. I've kind of learned coaching D-line. Um, Every drill is going to have a focus of what we're trying to get done, whether it be like get-offs, block destruction. But somewhere along the line, there's going to be other fundamentals incorporated into the drill that guys can't lose track of, and there's got to be carryover. And you'll see it. We always start our drills real simple and progress to adding more to it, and there's got to be carryover from drill to drill. So if we start doing things like block destruction, we can't lose cyber footwork. Um, that's big for me as well. You'll see me talk about it here when we get into the drills. Um, one thing I learned just in the last year coaching the D-line is coaching other positions, I would go on set hit. I would say, guys, on set hit, we're executing this, this, this movement, this drill, whatever. Um, and I realized that don't carry over the D-lines. We don't go on sound. We go on movement. So I do as much as I can in every drill 
to go on a, a ball key or a man key and not go on sound. You know, I'll give them a cadence, but like I tell them, you gotta ignore the noise and focus on movement. Now, some drills, you can't avoid it, but do everything you can coaching the D-line to, to go on a ball key or a man key and not have them react to sound. And then the last thing is, and you know, I played DB and no disrespect for any skill guys in here, but I really believe the closer you get to the ball, it's the more technique specific you must be. The margin for error is so small because every play is point of contact. I played uh, DB and the corners got point of contact grades uh, and overall grades. So they might be at point of contact 15, 20 plays up front in the D-line. Every play is point of contact. So your technique's got to be great. And that applies to O-line and D-line. And it's not a big scheme position. It's a lot of one-on-one -on -one battles you got to win. That's what I've really stressed to my guys and uh, something I believe in. In terms of fundamentals, kind of what I've done as I've coached different positions, I learned this as a player for Coach Holtz. Um, and then kind of kind of got emphasized when I GA'd for him was, before you start coaching a position, I feel like it's important, whatever it is, receivers, DBs, linebackers, D-line, whatever, find out what fundamentals are important to that position and write them down. You know, I have the ones for the D-line, we'll go over here in a second. DBs, it could be, uh, you know, uh, uh, ball skills, uh, you know, break points, that kind of stuff. You gotta find what fundamentals are important, and I believe that's how you build your drills, your installs, et cetera. So for me, I have fundamentals for the D-line, and I broke it up run game and pass game. And we're going to focus on run game. I'm going to run through the pass game one short, uh, briefly before I get into the run game stuff specifically. But my drill battery, it has each fundamental listed. And then the drills I believe in below that. So every day before practice, I play my practice, my, my camp, my spring ball, I want to incorporate these techniques I'm going to pull from these drills. Um, it's kind of helped me as a coach kind of, you know, figure out how to develop my guys, especially as I've changed from coaching position to position. Um, but pass game fundamental, I'll go through this quick, guy, before we get to the run game. And a lot of it will carry over as well. We'll talk about stance and get off. In the pass game, we'll talk about elongating our stance and jumping out of our stance, putting pressure on the alignment to our landmark. Talk about having a plan. We talk about lanes not gaps in the pass game two eyes two ears those four rush lanes we'll talk about specifically with our guys when we talk pass game after that we talk hands hips and height okay get his hands off ours get our hips open to our target reduce the height of our shoulder to give that o-lineman less surface area and like everything else it's finish all the guys you see the von miller the bosas it's not all the prettiest type stuff. They're just going balls to the wall nonstop getting the quarterback. Um, that's what I emphasize with those guys. Now carry over from pass game to run game. Um, run game fundamentals, guys. This is what we're kind of here for. Um, the first thing I tell guys before I get into details and specifics is our thing at Maine in the run game, but we want to do big picture. We want to create a new line of scrimmage through our man, through our target. We don't just shoot the gap. Uh, we play heavy through our target. We play with heavy shades. Our baseline for our, in, for our inside guys is crotch split, then adjustable off back sets for us. Um, but that's kind of the main point. Create a new line of scrimmage through our man and through our target. Um, so our fundamentals in the run game, we talk about stance and get off. When we talk about stance, we start from the ground up. And unfortunately, uh, if I was in person, I'd do a better job of showing you as I'm going through it. But we start with our feet parallel underneath our armpits. From there, we get into a heel-to-toe relationship. And that's adjustable based off a of kid's length. That's a starting point. But you might have kids who are real long legs. Guys are more, more like shorter uh, legs, and it's a little different there. But we start with heel-to-toe. Then we sink into our stance. Ankles, knees, and hips. All those positions you, talk, positions you talk about in the weight room, those power positions, we want to sink into it. Uh, from there, we want to reach out in front of our face with our man hand. We're a man hand down team. So if I'm a three technique, my inside hand's down. 
from a two eye, my outside hands down. That helps us step to our target. We're trying to step over and over again. But we want our hand in front of our face so we can crowd the ball and we know we're not off sides. And we key the man we're on, okay? And we perif the ball, okay? Um, that kind of something where initially I was, I, I told the guys key the ball, they would just stare inside. Um, I feel like I had to just teach as we kept, kept going. So I had the guys key the hip with the man we're on or the man we're moving to and learn to perif the ball. Now for the get off, and this is big, in pass game, we jump out of our stance, try and gain ground, put pressure on, on our linemen to our tackle or guard the whole time. In the run game, you want to get, I want to get that first step in the ground as fast as I can. And I want to replace my down hand. The first guy G8 for, he said called a six inch, or the second guy G8 for called a six inch step. Another guy I worked for, he didn't want to tell the D lineman six inches, this, that, and the other. He wanted to just go. So a good kind of in between, I told the guys is that first step should replace your down hand. And you want to get it in now. And the second step, you want to get it in the ground ASAP. It should be better than a bam. Because what you don't want to have happen is you don't want to make contact and strike on your target with one foot in the air. And you'll see some of that in the film where guys are making contact with one foot. They have one foot in the air, and they're getting washed out of there. Okay? You want to drive your feet violently. And also, you want to shoot your hands, elbows tight, thumbs up in everything we do. Okay? That's stance and get off. Pad level. We'll kind of incorporate this into each and every drill. We'll talk about striking with pads out, okay? We want our eyes through hands on the same level as our eyes, okay? Look right through your hands. We want a flat back. Our body position should be just like we're pushing a car okay? with how we're driving, how we're driving through our target. Um, we get the blow delivery and target. I, I talk about the word target over and over with our guys. For blow delivery, I tell my guys, I want to see you, your man, punch to the back, strike with heavy hands. I want to feel your hands on film. I want to see no lineman or tight ends, neck snap back, all that kind of stuff. You got to strike with heavy hands. And as you guys see this, we don't have a sled. So we got, or like a stuck in the ground sled. So we got to get creative in terms of teaching guys how to strike with heavy hands. We talk about target. And this is big. And because of what we do as a defense is we, even with our, all of our movements and our pressures, we rarely ever just shoot the gap. We'll play thick through our man. So our target carries over from playing base to stunts, the pressures. And for our target, our base way of doing it, our man hand. So if I'm a three technique, my inside hand, my target is the breastplate or sternum of the man I'm on. And that plays the base block of the lineman. Our outside hand or our off hand, okay, his target is the cuff of the O lineman, okay? And our eyes are on his shoulder pad. From there, we want to push pull, and I call it open the door on, our, on that lineman. But we want to do it staying square so we don't create any vertical creases in the front, okay? We want to knock that guy back and drive our feet. Okay, we want to strike with heavy hands. We want to lock out and extend. And that target of the sternum and the cuff stays consistent with we're working an outside shade or working an inside movement, whatever it might be. When I talk about target, I'm talking about sternum and cuff. Then the next thing is scheme recognition. What blocks am I getting? And uh, if we just talk day one playbook stuff with our guys, we'll do pods of 1v1. We'll go man on versus man away. Then beyond that, we teach how to play combos, double teams, et cetera. Um, getting the block destruction, separating escape. I'm going to play through our man. Throw our man by our hips, rip or punch, bring the same leg through it, okay? And also play gap and a half. Then finish, guys, how we get to the ball, tackle and pursuit, finish plays violently. And that's kind of what we're going to touch on throughout the rest, rest of this film, the rest of these slides, guys. So stance and get off. We'll work this every single day, guys. Um, we'll get into shoots every other day and then do a form of get-offs and line pursuit the next day. So we start the shoots off, guys, and we work the rails. We're just going straight, straight, get off the ball, okay? And we also incorporate our movements into this as well. So now we begin the drill, okay, under the shoots 
with the boards to emphasize keeping a base and not getting too near with our base, okay? Then we got the cone for a five yard finish for the guys. And like everybody else, every other D-line coach, I give the guys the set hit, the cadence, et cetera, but they go off my foot, or actually I should be using this right here, or some type of ball key, okay? Now, what we're emphasizing here, guys, we're trying to get done, it's the get off, punching our hands, but getting those feet in the ground as fast as we can. So right here, they get off the ball. They want to get that first step in the ground as fast as they can, shoot their hands, rise out of their stance, and burst through that cone. And this is a good picture right here. I'm giving the cadence. The guy on our left as we look at it, is a, is it will be a red shirt sophomore in the fall, a, fr a true freshman last fall, okay? Now, as you see, they're both kind of just peeking in with their eyes inside. They're learning how to prif the ball right here. As they get off the ball, that's a really good picture of Justin, who's about every bit of 6'3", and he's got long legs of shooting his hands and staying low and rising out of his stance, okay? Hands tight, okay? Everything close to his body, protecting those vital organs. As you guys see Jake, he's still learning what it means to punch those hands. And as we progress this drill, he's going to pay for this once we start adding a target to the drill. So Justin's probably got about an inch or two on Jake, but his first step is already in the ground. I mean, excuse me, Justin's first step's already in the ground as Jake's still having this thing rise up. That makes sense, guys? And that's, uh, that's big right there for uh, getting those feet in the ground as fast as you can. So Jake's got to uh, – fix his hands, and also get that foot in the ground quicker so when he strikes, he's not making contact with one foot in the ground. And here's it from the side, you guys, we work the boards. And as you kind of see from, one well, thing you got to be careful of is having the guy just straight waist bending. You want to see Mel right here sink those hips down, okay, so we can pop and rise out of his hips. And one coaching point too, guys, I put this on here, is this kind of happened to me. Um, is for uh, my back on the text right now. All right, is right here is as you do D line drills. Okay, a lot of times we might do the drill in the habit. I know I do of on the white line. Okay, um, so the guys have the habit of always playing the line, and we get to like team drills. Okay. Um, if they're always starting to drill in like the plus and the minus 35, they get in the habit of lining up just on the line of scrimmage. So what I try to have do as much as I can, and if we can do it in team, is starting drills not on the line so they can learn how to crowd the ball and not just play the white line. So if we're you know, on the plus 36, they're not lining up on the white line yard off sides, or if we're on the minus 33, they're not two yards back. So it's learning, teaching them how to crowd the ball with getting lined up. Okay, now. We do the same drill with our movements, okay? So we're still working get off. We've just progressed to our angle footwork. And this, any type of inside movement we call an angle, outside would be a slant. And that footwork stays consistent. We were doing an inside one gap movement or outside movement. So in this picture right here, both guys are working one gap movements inside. So he's got his right in a right-hand stance, Chuck's in a left-hand stance. And with our angle steps, we want to take a 45-degree inch step, gaining width and penetration to our target. So I have them just go over that board. That second step is vertical, straight to their target. Okay? Now, we still want to punch, and we still want to get those feet in the ground as fast as we can as we play the run game. And that's a pretty good picture by both these guys. They're shooting right here at the same time right here, punching and getting vertical as fast as they can. And number nine, where you can see number nine, cheating the drill a little bit with it. But it's a 45-degree inch step and getting vertical now all while you're punching. And you're going to see uh, the one right here. So 44 to our right as we look at it, okay? Good job with his footwork. Good job with that second step, getting vertical, which you don't see as a punch. 
Okay, and that's where sometimes if you got two guys helping you to drill, it's always good to have one guy be the ball key, and you can stand back here and watch and coach the drill as you keep going. But 44 has got to be better right there. Now, with the second movement we do, we talk about doing a full angle movement, okay? So angle and slant are all one gap movements, okay? And the emphasis stays the same. We want to play thick and stay square through our target. We get to our two gap movements. We call it a full angle. And the way we teach that, we're working two gaps, is we'll have the guys slide, slide, and then vertical through their target based off what the block does, if he comes two meter away from me, but we're still working the shoots and our get offs. So now they still go on the ball key, it's slide, slide, keeping a base so we don't get washed and getting vertical and shooting our hands through our target. And one thing that happens if you guys watch this stuff, guys, is when you do it on air, the punch can be, if you get it at all, it's incredibly poor. They'll just shoot the hands and bring them back and that's where the next phase of the drill will add a target. They actually have to punch something. Okay, so it emphasizes the next phase of the drill. And here it is from, from a, up top right here, guys, working that full angle movement. It's slide, slide, staying square, then working vertical to that target, punching our hands. Slide, slide, vertical. Still stay low, keep the base rise out of our stance. Now, as we progress drill to drill, one thing I really emphasize for the guys is, like I said before, is, is having carryover from one drill to the next. So now, this drill begins the same as the straight get-offs, okay? Now, what we're adding right here is a target, okay? So for the guys that were having that wide punch, okay, or not punching at all, we're having a guy right here on the on a once they move take that uh shield and punch it right through their helmet okay so now it gives them a target they got to punch through okay and they got to drive through now one thing you'll see is some of these guys as we progress the drill might lose track of their footwork and that's where it's got to be carryover from one drill to the next as we kind of shift the focus a little bit so right here they're going on a ball key right here this is a good job by nine of shooting those hands quickly, getting those feet in the ground and punching through the bag. My man on the left right here, kind of the same problem he had before is he's just so wide in his punch. And a lot of times the guys won't recognize it unless they see themselves on film or they feel the bag just smack them right in the head. He's got to get that thing tighter and get his eyes up. Good job right there, punching through. You want to drive through the bag. And same thing right here. And this is just having carryover. So now we're in a right-hand stance, left-hand stance. Right foot's back, left foot, left foot is back. You want to step with that right foot first in this picture. You're going to see John here, just because we added something to the drill, he loses track of it, and he's actually stepping with that left foot first. We can't do that. We're going to lose. We have no base when we strike to our target. And same thing, we go through this stuff fast because I try and get the get offs. I try and get conditioning here and get the guys going fast through the shoots and then give them a cadence, give them quick count mixed up. You see, 44 is not ready, he's got to get going. Same thing, my man's late with his hands, got to have his elbows tighter. My man right here, get those elbows tighter so we don't miss on his target. Then we keep progressing it. So now we, did, we ran the rails, we just went straight down the board. Now working the angle steps again, but still working with our target. So we got to have an actual punch. The first 45 degree state skate step. The second step is getting vertical. And what you're going to see here with the base of, no, of the guy on the left right here. Okay. He wants to be, get this thing up and down quicker. Kayon is doing a real good job of getting his foot up and down the grass right now. What you don't want to do is raise your foot up so high that you're making, you're making contact with one foot in the ground right here when you're working these inside movements. You want to get your feet in the ground now. 44, right? Good first step. Get it in there sooner right here and get that, that other step vertical. 
Now, we keep progressing it through, all right? So we just worked, emphasized the strike. We gave the kids a target, okay? Now, we're giving the guys a target with some resistance. So now they got to punch this thing with heavy hands, okay? And they got to drive their feet on contact and roll their hips through it, okay? And we, it's, it starts the exact same way as get offs, but now they got to punch, drive through their target for five steps, and then disengage and finish outside. And that's where, with the finish, I want to see the guys throw the shield by their hips, rip that man or that inside leg through, and finish with a rip or a punch. And it can't be something casual. Like you guys know, if you try and shut off a block and you just kind of go through the motions, you're going to get stuck. And even though we're, the focus is get offs in the punch, you got to do the whole drill. So this is a good job by Josh, the guy closest to us. He gets off the ball. The other guy's late as hell. He punches. That's the position we want to be in. Eyes through hands, elbows tight, flat back. And he rolls up through the chute and works to lock out the hips and arms and drives his feet. And when I talk about feeling someone's hands on film, I know it's just, you know, no pads with the shield. But you see the guy holding his dummy, get his ass knocked back some. And that's how it sh I should say, feel your hands on film, and Josh drives him back. Now, I'd like to see more of a violent finish for Josh. It's not bad. Number 58 on the far side, he throws the bag by his hips, and he over-exaggerates bringing that same knee through. And you'll see some guys not quite doing that. Now, right here, the film's a little bit late. You'll see k -On can be a little bit lower, but he's got his eyes through hands. Okay, now, he wants to work to lock out those hips and arms, okay, drive his feet. Then with the finish, he starts to drift outside. I want him to stay tight to his target, okay? Stay tight and rip this thing through. You see Skyler on the far side, as he works to throw by, you don't get the same finish, guys. I want a violent finish, throw that thing by, and as that left knee comes through, he should be arm over in this thing, violent with the exact same foot, exact same shoulder. Real good job by Chuck. He needs to pick his eyes up, though, but he gets off the ball. He shoots his hands, roll, he needs to do more of rolling his hips, knocks him back, but at least he's over-exaggerating to finish, ripping that leg through. And then right here, the first thing right for Skyler. He wants to get his hands to his target. So you see this rep right here. He's already wrong. He misses his target right here, and he's, his hands are playing way too wide. Sorry about that, guys. And his hands are just way too wide, misses on his target. He's out of control. He, he does, he's kind of waist bending, so he can't bring a base with him. And he's got to finish the drill. And that's kind of the first get off drill we do, how we incorporate the shoots for their pad level. And then we keep adding things for their target and their finish as we progress through. We also do the, do, do the movements in there also. Um, and as we keep going with the other one we do, we call it line pursuit. And this is a get off, read and react drill. Okay, so we're still working first, second down run game. Where they're getting off the ball and shooting their hands. And now, they're reacting to my movement. The second my foot or my hands clap, anything about me moves, they get off the ball, okay? And they should be shooting their hands like it's first, second down. Then beyond that, they're reacting to what I do. I'll give them run, pass, screen, or draw. So right here, if I just raise up like pass, and this is big. I'm always trying to find ways for, to teach my guys how to activate from run to pass. And they've got to convert and get an urgency level of converting from first, second down run to pass and work into their landmark. Then they react to me. I give them a low hat read. I want to see them get off the ball and flatten down the line. They want to plant that right foot and drive, don't drift, and sprint down the line like we're getting outside run, stretch, any of that kind of stuff. And I don't want to see them drift. Okay, they got to get flat now. Okay, so now as they burst down the line, his finish for Wrath is going to be this white line. For Josh, it's the 10 yard line, and they want to sprint through it. 
Same thing right here. That low hat read, you want to plant and drive. And one thing about Kayon is he never has wasted movement. It's hard to tell right here, but he is flat down the line why John tends to drift this thing and get too high. But once they get that low hat read, you want to get flat down the line, and then John's working to finish through the goal line, and I have a cone marker for Kayon to finish five yards inside the end zone. The next one we got is draw. Same thing, guys. I'm always trying to find different ways to teach my guys, you know, screen recognition, draw recognition, because in a lot of the guys is just recognize when you get to throw by, okay, and also retrace them. So right here, I'm giving the guys a hi-hat read and then back downhill. And all I want to see him do is plant that upfield foot, which is the left foot for Chuck, the right foot for Skyler, and drive back downhill as soon as they recognize draw with some urgency, okay? Because the guys that play scroll and draw and screen is the D-line. Everybody else pulls it up. They send it back to the front. Next one I give them, it's still, still draw, my bad. So right here, get off the ball, high hat, low hat, plant, retrace, sprint through the line. Last we got is screen. Okay, so get off the ball. Okay, I point screens. They were getting jailbreak screen from the receiver. They want to plant, burst, and sprint through, through that line to our target, and then we'll get to a tackling drill later. We incorporate kind of screen pursuit right there. Now, as we get into the game film, okay, so we're watching nine and 99, talking about just get off and targeting this stuff. Right here for nine, playing a six eye. That's the perfect position we want him to be in. He's getting his eyes through his hands, hands to his target. So he's playing an inside shade technique, and he should know back away. I can play this thing a little bit thicker, all right? My left hand or my outside hand's working right down in the sternum, right hand's on the cuff, okay, of that tight end. And I wanna knock him back and create levels. It makes it much easier to play combos if you create levels of the man you're on and your target. Good body position by Kayon knocks this thing back, all right? Now for the three technique, Josh. Now the guard's just trying to swipe his hands down. He's not really getting off the ball right here. So that's a right idea by Josh. He's getting his hands to his target right here. Wins inside, drives his feet. A good picture right there for Josh. Then what I tell the guys too is we talk about get off. It all starts with getting off the ball. But in, I don't want to talk paper gaps. So right here, we get counter OT, okay? Where they're reading the end. Our base way for the nose to play any choke block, which I call, if you get guard pull, center back block a choke. On paper, we have that center press into it, okay, and hold that backside cutback, okay? But the same thing, you get off the ball, we don't play paper gaps. So Chuck right here, he's not playing through his target, but he gets off the ball and beats the choke, and he actually knocks off the wrapper on the OT play, okay? And while number nine gets a TFL, Chuck makes this thing go because he just gets off the damn ball and beats the center on the choke. Now, right here, Chuck did some good things. This is one where he's not so great. Okay, so now Chuck's playing the one technique versus far back. We tell him to loosen up near back. He would be crotch split. We're expecting right now run S. Okay, so now Chuck's working to get off the ball. Right now, he's got no target. You're getting nothing out of his hands. He's lunging, he's bent at the waist, all right? And he's getting reached on a, on a tight, tight action by the center. And even worse than that, his left foot, excuse me, that second foot is way too high in the air. So he's lunging, he has no target, and his feet are raising up way too high. So he's making contact with one foot in the ground. He's lunged and just completely out of control. Now, right here, and this is a little bit different because it's a pressure we're running, but same thing. Focus on the three technique right here. Okay, we're telling them to get off the ball, jet through this B-gap right inside. We actually have him loosen up some right here. And he had the same urgency with his get-off, but now he's getting hands to his target, 
and he's getting those feet in the ground. And that's why it's so big. You can't raise those feet in the ground too high. You want to drive them in the ground as fast as you can and knock this thing back and set this thing to the B gap. Now, blow delivery and target, okay? The first drill we do with the guys, we call it rapid hand. And I used to do it, I do it occasionally, to get the guys in the mindset of shooting their hand as fast as they can. I've had the guys, I'll give them a sound called on set hit, and for 15 seconds, have them punch and reset as many times as they can, their elbows tight, thumbs up. But sometimes if I did that right away, it almost taught the guys to punch and retract as opposed to punching through a target. So what, how I kind of modified this, and like I said, because the group's so big, guys, it's a case where I got to give them a cadence, like a sound to go on. If it was just two of them, I would work to give them a ball key. Um, so right here on set hit, having a six-point stance. And the guys with the bags are huge. And this is kind of one of my ways I make up for not having an in-the-ground sled is they've got to hold this thing thick. But it's a big difference when you're punching something that's got resistance. If you're punching something, he has no leg here, and this thing has some give, you're not naturally going to punch it as hard as you can, okay? Like right now, for example, I've got my guys working like different stuff with their punch on a concrete wall because the emphasis, they really got to try and punch through the thing. So this guy with the back got to hold this thing thick and put his leg right behind it. Okay, and I have the guys in a six point on my sound. They're just focusing on the punch. Hands to their target, elbows tight, thumbs up, punch through the man. I'm not worried about hips or any of that kind of stuff. I want to just focus on the strike. So I say set hit, they strike, I have them hold it. So they can see their hands in place. When I say reset, they get back into a six point and I go again about four times in a row. So good, I want to see him punch and hold it. And I want to, and it sounds kind of corny, but I want to hear that bag with some pop. I want to hear that thing punch, and I want to feel your hands when we're doing the drill. You want to punch and punch through the thing and hold it. Then I'm going to say reset, punch and hold. Then they reset. We should be getting like four reps of pop at this thing. Then next group up. Set hit, I want to see him punch. I can already tell you right now, I'm not feeling his hands right here. I want to see him punch through this thing. I feel Mel, ain't feeling Jake. You want to punch through the bag. Good set hit. It's hold and reset. And ideally, if I had a sled, I'd be doing it all on there for, for the, has some resistance to it. And this is here from, from an aerial copy. I'm giving the sound set hit. They reset. They should be holding it more. The are just cheating the drill. And we're not worried about bringing their hips right now. Just focus on the punch and the target. Now, the, the next phase of it. Okay, so we worked on the punch and the target. We're coming out of our hips. So now what we do is we put the bags lateral. We want to increase the target right here, okay, and make it wider, more realistic, okay? So now it's the same thing. You want to punch through the man. But now the emphasis now is locking out your arms and locking out your hips, okay? So now what I'm trying to get done right here, I want to see them punch through the bat, through the man. They don't want to raise up, punch through it, okay? And when they land, they should be landing on their belly button first. And they should lock their hips out. So as they punch through this thing, 50 or Mel is in the exact body position you want to be in. As he punches, he's punching through the man, locking out his hips. Right here, he's punching up high through the man. You want to punch through the man, not punching straight up. You want to punch through him. Then right here, I think this is Kayon right here. Everybody else is locking these hips out. This is the picture I want to see. Lock out the arms, lock out the hips. Kayon never releases these things. He keeps them all coiled up. He wants to lock out and get the punch and explosion that he's got in him. 
Let me see. Yeah, he, ne he never pops his hips through. He shouldn't be catching himself this early. Same thing. So I say set hit. They come out of their hips, punch through the man, knock him back. They get reset and they go again. Perfect by Mel. Mel's jumping out of his stance, 52, bringing those hips through, locking out. That's how it should look. He's working too high through the bag. You want to punch through him. Good job by Chuck working to lock the hips out. Same thing by Witt. Same thing. His hips never come through it. Not good enough. Not going to get it done. Now, keep progressing through. We do a thing called gunfight, and it combines everything we just talked about, okay? So now the next move we want to kind of want to emphasize in this drill is resetting your hands and having to strike quickly, okay? What I don't want to see them do is wind up, okay? So the way I emphasize this, we start in a six point, okay? I give the guys a sound. Okay, I tell them set hit, and they're going to punch the first bag. Once they punch that first bag, hit their target, they're going to reset their hands back to a six point. Okay, and this bag is going to move out of the way. And this second bag is going to come forward with some purpose. So it's got some umph to it, and they got to punch back on it. So the first bag, they strike, and they move. The next one walks up, they got to reset and punch and come out of their hips through their target through the bag. And this one just emphasizes resetting your hands quickly and punching through a target that's got some resistance. So it's set hit, punch, and they got to reset back to the grass. I don't want to see them wind up, okay? And some guys will cheat it and not bring their hands back to the grass. Punch, reset, and lock the hips out. Real good picture by Mel and Garrett of punching through the man and locking the hips out. And the guy with the bag has got to walk a little bit of tempo to it. And this way, if they're not shooting their hands and they're not resetting, the bags can get them right in their face. So right here, it's set hit. It's a strike. And the only bad part is when I do this, I, it's like that. It's hard to get around that initial punch. I hate how they just have to tap the bag. But for the purpose of the drill, it's to reset the hands and punch through the last bag. And it's a good job by Raph right here, bringing his hips through with it. Not so good by Kyrie. He's just striking all arms. He wants to punch and drive through his man and knock this thing back, not work straight up on it. Better by Kyrie, the guy in the white shirt right there. We get the two-man sled. Now, this is the way we incorporate the whole thing. We got the target, the footwork, driving our feet. So now I give him a ball key. Okay, I'll give him the cadence. And we're going through this thing fast. We got left hand stance, right hand stance. I want to see him punch hands their target, eyes through hands, get their feet in the ground as fast as they can, and punch, drive through their man, roll their hips, lock out. And on the finish, I want to see him bring their same foot, same leg with a punch or a rip, like what you get five doing right here emphasize the finish even though we're just going on air it's a habit while 44 you don't get the same finish okay and that's going to cost him when we get to the, doing things on live reps same thing punch roll your hips lock out the arms get a finish the ripper a punch real good picture by josh he can get a little bit lower so his eyes are through his hands but good pad level flat back violently working his feet rolling his hips out of it Now, you'll see right here, and this kind of gets in a little bit of like a scheme recognition, talk about blow delivery and target. So now, focus on the shade and the three technique, okay? We base out of a crotch foot alignment versus any near back, any far back, we go hand the foot the blocks we're expecting. So now, starting with the one technique, he's getting the combo block. That's a really good job of getting his hands to his target. And the first thing we talk about with the combos is play through your man. Don't play back for the guard and create levels. They can't overtake you if you put the center on a new level. That's a good job getting his hands through his target. You can do a better job reactivating his feet. And as they work in this combo, work it up. You want to keep punching, 
putting that center's body in that gap to keep him free off the backer. Don't play back through the guard. Keep getting vertical on the center. That's a real good job with his target and his hands. Now for the free tech, number 18. That's a good job with his inside man hand. We're going to right down the sternum. So any type of base block, he should be in good shape. His outside arm gets too wide, gets caught in the guy's arm. He should be tighter. When we talk about opening the door, that's the picture we want, where we're staying square and we're getting this guard's shoulders turned, keeping this gap tight and constricted. We don't want Nico to start getting turned and creating a big A gap inside. Restrict that gap, open the door, and that ends up being a real good picture by 18. Good job by five, playing through his combo. 20 is wrong, but gets a step tackle strip. It's kind of how it goes, but I don't listen. He gets, does a job wrong, gets a tackle strip. Can't tell him nothing. Hey, Coach, there was one, uh, one question in the chat. Maybe you kind of answered yes. a little bit, but if you could uh, just address it maybe. It says, how do, you teach, uh, how do you teach them to take on a down block? Are you a spill team? Yep, so we base – out of, a, out of a spill and pride team. So right here, and this could be a good example, and I'll start with the, with the end. Our base defense, we're a spill team. Now we can change up with pressures based off coverage. So right here, if we get a man away block from the, uh, from the tackle, okay, we teach this guy to get hands on and crush him down. Any man away block, your eyes go inside for what I call second level blocks. It could be backside guards. It could be tight ends. The way we play these second level blocks, we're a spill team. And what I tell the kids, we want to spill and pry this thing up. Okay. We don't necessarily want to just kind of think the best way to just show it is we don't necessarily want to wrong arm this thing and get skinny. Okay. What I tell the guys is you want to punch. As this guy came across, you want to put your outside hand down his midline, your left arm through his inside cuff, and pry him upfield to not allow any, any downhill creases. Okay? Now, because one thing happens if we try and wrong arm it, we could get washed. Now, in the same breath, I tell the guys, if his path is so tight, okay, like if they're running like, um, like counter OY or something like that, and he's so tight, and you can't pry, and you can't work to punch that outside arm on his, on his, in his sternum, and his path is so tight, and you've got a wrong arm it, we can live with that, but you've got to pry it back up field so we don't just get washed and allow downhill creases. Um, and that's our base way of playing that technique, whether it be the end, nose, or tackle. The stud, which is a cue player, we teach that a little bit differently. That answer your question? If you guys got questions, keep, keep them coming as well. But um, right here, in terms of block destruction, you'll see number 18. His target's not great, but he gets off the ball and his pad level's outstanding. So now he punches, drives him back. The thing we got to do a better job here, and we'll get it more with like block destruction, is the finish. It is right here, and the first thing he's going to tell me is getting grabbed. It should be a TFL, okay? So now – as he's punching, he's a four-eye punch, the inside pad of, the, pad of that tackle. He punches, reactivates his feet. This is where it's huge. He now wants to take that left arm and club down on that lineman's arms. They're not going to call holding. You want to knock him off you and bring that left arm and left leg, leg through. This should be a TFL. If you don't bring that left leg with it, you have no base. If you don't bring that left arm through, they're going to stay holding on. You got to bring both at the exact same time. Now, right here, watch the, the end, okay? So we're getting a divide action in the, in the B gap right here, an insert play for the end. This is a good job with his get with his get off and target. That's perfect. Hand down the sternum, outside hand on the cuff. He's a little bit high, but the big thing you see him do is he restarts his feet, and he really restricts that B gap bubble, and it makes a much cleaner play for the mic and the will and divide action. Now, this is what we don't want to do. Everything we do in our defense, 
this is not who we are. And kind of this game became like a lot of passes. So our guys started playing everything like it was third and 10 right here. But for this nose, our target is the center sternum and his cuff. We want to play through our man. We don't lay guys. We don't just swim move them, especially when it's first and 10. Okay, so now right here, we're getting the divide insert play back in the B gap. Okay. Chuck just works to swim. He's got no target. He's playing straight up. He just runs up field. So now he's got no base. So he gets washed by the guard. The center gets a free run on the will. Okay. And we got not just as he letting the center work up, but he's getting washed. Where these are the downhill creases that we don't we don't believe in. We don't do it. We play thick through our target. The first thing I tell the guys, create a new line of scrimmage through our man, through our target. Last one right here, just the backside of stretch. So watch the three technique. He's heavied up because a lot of times we get run away from us. So he's a heavy three technique right here. They're running outside zone. He should not get cut off by that tackle. So now he gets stretch action. His target goes away. He needs to keep punching through his target. Don't arm over it. You get your right hand right down his midline, left hand on the cuff. As he goes hard away, you keep playing for your target. Once you start trying to swim, okay, you let those guards work up, and you make it easy to get over taken backside. So now we get scooped by the backside tackle, and this thing creases backside. Luckily, Whip makes a play on it. It increases even more. And that's kind of what we talk about with blow delivery and target for the guys right there. And target, we're going to talk about over and over and over again. Scheme wreck. This right teach the guys how to play certain blocks. Um, and I give the guys, you know, we go pods, okay? We'll go, and I don't have all the film of this stuff, guys. I didn't get it all done last year. We'll do 1v1 pods and just teach them how to play man on block which they want to punch their target eyes in the gap or down block. And based off their technique, they could be spill and dive, or they could be Q. And that's where we teach the 1v1 pods. 2v1 is where we teach more so for the inside guys how to play combos and doubles. Okay? 3v2 is when we work all of our movement stuff. Our movements, first based off our key coming two or away from us, and then offense versus defense pods. If Coach Charlton ever wants to do O-line, D-line pods, that's the best run game drill we can do is those good on good pods um, as much as we can. So now we got 1v1 pods, didn't get any of that kind of stuff. So we go 2v1. And day one with the young guys, I might tell the guys what blocks they're getting. That don't last long. And I kind of mix it up. And I give these guys a cadence and a block. So I'll say set hit, he's on one, set hit, it's on two. Once again, he's got to react to a movement, okay? So now right here, I just give him a man on block. I just want to see you punch, eyes to your target, play the base, open the door on the, on the guard. Then right here, I'm mixing it up. So now I give the guys a combo. And this is where Justin was, a, I think, a red shirt freshman here. So now – we're adding something to the drill where he's probably thinking too much. Am I getting combos, doubles? What am I getting? And it fucks him, it messes him up to where he, his first step, I don't care what block he's getting, okay? We're a man hand down team, guard, tackle. He should be stepping with his right foot because he's got so much going on in his brain. He's stepping with his left foot and he's got no chance to get to his target. And this is one of the reasons we teach man hand down because if we just, you know, we, so it, it forced us to step to our target and our key, okay? So as footwork's wrong, we're getting the combo block. And for all these drills, guys, it's big to have the, the, um, the guys running the blocking schemes to, like, know how to run it so it looks the right way, where we're going to have this guy reach to his outside pad, I mean, to, to his opposite pad, take him over. Raf's going to work up to the A-gap player. So right here. Uh, Justin misses his target, and even though he's got to, he's wrong, he's got to recover and keep playing back for the outside tip of that guard on the combo blocks and go overtaken. Then right here, this would be a bad rep by Jake. So Jake's a freshman, okay? He's playing a three technique, guard, tackle. He's going to get comboed. His feet aren't bad, but his hands are awful, 
okay? And this is the same thing he's doing to shoot. He's got to shoot his hands tight so he misses his target, but his feet are better and his pad level is not terrible. But what he does do is we want him to work to create levels here, okay? Work to punch, drive this thing back, play through our target, and create levels so that this adjacent lineman can't overtake you, okay? But even if you can't create levels, I tell the guys, keep playing through your man. Don't play back through that tackle. Now, I think this was a double team. So now, when we play double teams, we got guard, tackle, three technique. Okay? When we play doubles, the first thing I tell the guys, that man on comes, it's a man on block, and that adjacent alignment adds pressure, we're going to double team. The first thing I tell guys is you want to punch and create levels. Play through your target, and he misses that right hand. He should be keep it tighter to the guy's sternum. You want to create levels and drive this thing back, okay? Once we feel pressure and we're getting moved by this tackle, I tell the guys, keep pressing through your target, but now put your ass into that tackle and sit in the bar stool to keep yourself from getting movement, okay? We want to be in this position a little better, should have a better base with this left foot, and then we work to split it, okay, with a club or a punch or we assume a club or a punch or a rip. What we don't want to do, and you'll see it on film sometimes, as soon as the guys anticipate any kind of pressure from this guy, they start turning right away. And what happens to me in the past is guys that do that, doubles and combos can look similar, and they can get reached real easily. So I tell the guys, first and foremost, you create levels. There's combos and doubles. There's similar teaching in both. There's doubles, once you feel yourself getting moved, sit in the bar stool and sit into it. Those are, those are the two on one uh, blocks we do. All the three on two blocks we do, we're working our movements. So in this picture right here, we're working as if it's like a three technique. And even, even though it's two guys that want the three technique, just working our angle steps. So the first step is that 45 degree step to our landmark. That second step is vertical now, okay? So he's keying the inside hip of this guy. He's keying the inside, that's inside step of him. If our target comes to us, we want to step and get vertical now, okay? Because that keeps us, if we step and get vertical, it makes it more difficult to get double reached by the adjacent lineman. So we want to step and get vertical, but we also, if we're running like this is the guard three technique, any like run this way, get vertical and cut this thing off in the A-gap. So right here, I think it's a pretty good picture by 44. You want to get that first step in now, and that second step must get vertical ASAP so you don't get cut off. You don't want to go, if you get this hard zone away, go chasing them, okay, and creating these vertical creases inside. Then right here. So now if we get any type of man away block from our key, it changes. So now where our aiming point is the opposite hip that target goes away we now want to punch and put his body in the gap we play our gaps one of two ways our eyes or his body so no we now want to punch and if we're moving to the a gap right here and he goes hard away we don't just want to rip and run and try and cross face he should have no power in his footwork. You take him, put his ass in the gap, and any second level block, we would spill, okay? And it's same for both guys. You drive their ass in the gap, and you end up back door the thing. Now, good on good pods. Like I said, man, if, if we could do this every day, I would. But I understand you can't do it during the season, but this is a freshman right here, and you can't simulate this stuff going versus each other in Indy. So right here, we're just working a five technique on the back side of zone. Usually we have like a nine technique if it's like a 21 personnel formation. On the back side of zone, we're working the, they're working the combo up to the mic right here, getting cut off by the tight end. And this is actually a terrible job of number 90 of really playing through heavy to this tackle. And I don't think his hands are great right here, but he has a good job of not trying to fight back through the tight end. It ends up working to split in the C gap. 
Now it gets the two eye work. Okay, so now we got the two eye. He's playing thick through the guard. This is one of the tougher blocks our guys can get at the two eye. So now they're, we're getting zoned to us. Okay, he's playing thick through that guard. It looks like his target and paddle is pretty good. And this is a bitch. When that center comes and chips you up, as, as there's zone, it can be tough. And this is where it's easy to get knocked out into that B gap right here. But Scott does a good job of just keep fighting through his targets. This is kind of works to push him. And if this, they're, if they're this heavy, a micro wheel should be in a free run. But as once he comes off, keep fighting through that inside pad of that guard, but never spin out of it like that. And this is a good picture. I feel like I'm abusing my freshman right here. He's going up against a, uh, our starting guard. We're working the three tech and the loose five technique combination. They both get man on blocks. Decent pad level. I like that inside hand more, more on his uh, breastplate and side. Pad level's not bad. This guard's a really good job with his punch. It's also a really bad job by our three technique. Same thing. He's winding up. That right there, guys, is the worst position we can be in as a three technique. You have no chance of winning. I don't care what you got with your feet, pad level, whatever. If you expose your chest, you got no chance. He just took up for a ride a little bit. So now working some six eye work. And he's keying that, keying this inside half of that tight end. He's getting zoned to him. And he does a decent job right here of create, working to create levels, playing through his target. Now right here, we're looking at the uh, nose right here. Pre-snap, he's got back away, so he's a loose shade. Back trades, I think he should be heavying up right here. Yep, so we're good there. He can get the combo block from the center and the guard. And this is where what I don't want. He's anticipating that block, so he's just turning his shoulders. You don't want to just turn like that because we don't get a new line of scrimmage and allows to get overtaken too easy. He wants to get vertical through his man, okay? That's not quite the picture we want. He can get more knockback and create more levels right here as opposed to just turning now. As we kind of get into it, guys, kind of getting into some scheme, this guy's wrong. What we do versus zone read, he should be heavied up right here, foot to foot, okay? And he should be punching, getting hands on this tackle, and driving him in the B gap, working to chase the dive, keeping him off the mic. Okay, right here. This is a real good picture of 52 playing through his target, okay? So right here, we got the nine technique. I think we're like an under call. He's playing a heavy five. And we talk about violently finishing on block destruction, bringing your same foot, same leg through, okay? So now, we're getting zone S, okay? They're working the combo to the mic. He's now, his pad level's too high, but his target's good, and he's working to stay thick. And now, as that tackle comes off, okay? He's working to be square, and he's bringing that right leg through. Now he's in good. He's in good. He's in good body position to be thick on the back right here. But he's playing through his target. Once that tackle works up, he's able to split this thing and chest up the running back. I think we'll play this with. Right oh, this is a double team for eighteen. This is not what we want. So they're going to run one back power to the boundary. Okay, so we're gonna get double here, base block, choke block here. And some of this stuff happens, guys, too. If your guys aren't confident in how strong they are, they'll kind of do this as well. So he's anticipating the double team. So as soon as he gets his hands to that guard, he starts turning, okay? Which the good thing is, he does keep the guys from working up, but we wanna get our ass down. And before we start sitting down on the double team, we wanna punch and work to create levels on the double, okay? Don't anticipate it and start turning right away. Create levels first, knock your man back. And this is a better picture right here. So we got the five technique to our right, okay? So we're getting one back power this way. We're gonna double 20 to the backers, okay? Max is a real good job right here of playing through his target. He gets off the ball, plays through his target, restarts his feet, and because he creates levels, it's much easier to split this thing. 
now staying with scheme recognition guys something we work we call it combo cut so you will do things week to week based off what the opponent does um so like backside of stretch for example three technique um guard tackle okay a lot of times teams might try and cut us off like richmond did that one play or some teams might cut backside so if a team does that we'll drill this more to where for the three technique once we get that man away action on that wide reach play away from us okay playing back through that tackle with that right hand to play the cut and then get flat down the line so what i do i give the guys one or two blocks man away with a cut or man on where my guys got to actually can't just cheat the drill and i'll give them you know on one or two and they got to play the drill so right here chuck gets that guard and that stretch away he's got to pad back to that tackle get that right hand into it and then he wants to flatten down the line you're getting this action the ball's not hitting here it's bam bam and he's got to redirect flat and garrett does it pretty well right i think this is it so garrett gets that hard stretch action he pads back bam get flat down the line chase it down so this one is same thing hard stretch pad back play the cut and get flat then this is to keep them honest so they can't just play the drill i'll just give them a man on block they just got a punch step obviously now the cutter's not going punch step hands a target open the door and you'll see it back here so we're getting stretched back's going to trade work the cut chuck does a good job of padding back on the uh, tackle We should heavy up versus the near back. Good job right there. Tackle works to cut off. He pads back, gets his hands on, protects himself, and then gets flat down the line. Should be a little bit faster than that. Okay, block destruction. Okay. Now, like we talked about before, a lot of this is same foot, same leg. Okay, ripper punch through. And the good thing about this, guys, is Coach Ryan does a great job where a lot of our drills we do in practice. We're always working tackling and block destruction as a group. And there are certain drills that guys have been in Maine for a while. I've all kind of probably done these the same because it's been kind of built in the program. So we'll do circuits. Let me see. Okay. So we call this one SLE. And we do it. This is the linebackers doing it. We do it in rotation with groups. It's Coach Kite's drill. I'll do an indie if we don't, if we don't get to it enough. But um, this is SLE. And it emphasizes for shock, lock, and escape. So for this drill right here, guys, it's as if, and imagine like a three technique, he already stepped with that man foot, okay? And he's got his strike foot down. We're in a fit position, okay? We want our hips down, okay? And bent power position, okay? And the first sound coach gives them is gonna be shock and lock. We wanna roll our hips, lock out our arms, like we saw earlier in some of the drills we were doing, and we want to violently pound our feet in the ground, okay? Be violent with the feet. On that second sound, we want to over-exaggerate, ripping that same foot, same leg. And both these guys do a really good job ripping that knee through and can get more out of ripping that arm through. So now you got 43 doing it. Coach is going to tighten his base up some so he's not so narrow. He's going to get into the fit, first sound, punch, shock and lock it, roll the hips and lock out the arms, violent with the feet. I can't stress it enough. On that second sound, he wants to throw, throw that uh, shield by his hips. And the only thing you're not getting the same, guys, you can kind of see it, you don't get the same over-exaggerated knee, uh, knee driving through, ripping that inside arm. And you're going to get a good picture right here by five. He's going to work an outside movement where he's now playing the outside half of his guard. And you're going to see him do a good job of right here. He's got his hands to his target. And then he's going to violently throw by that tackle, I mean the guard, and bring the rip and the same foot, same leg with it. And because he does that, he knocks that guard off. But now he's in a good power position to fit up the, the tailback. It's a good job by Chuck. Now, right here, you're going to see the same idea from nine. So we're running the pressure. So Kaon's working an outside movement. 
So he's working right hand down the midline, left hand on the cuff. He works this slant footwork. He steps to it. His target's not great. His right hand's a little bit too wide, but he throws the hands by, brings the same leg through, fits up the running back. Steer drill. And this is a big drill for what we do, guys. So what we, this is how we play all base blocks and reach. And for this drill, we start the guys in the fit, okay? So now, it's as if we're an outside shade, ball's inside. We already struck, we need to our strike foot in the ground, our left hand on the midline, our right hand on the midline, left hand on the cuff. So now we got this thing fitted up. I tell the lineman, it's on your movement. So on his movement, he's working to overtake the outside shoulder. And one thing he can't be is a fish. You gotta actually give him something. You can't brother-in-law this stuff. So now, once the, the D lineman feels the O lineman's movement, he's gonna lock out, punch, lock out his hips, and work to knock this thing back. And now we wanna steer and open the door, take that left arm, work to lock it out, push, pull, pull the inside arm, lock out the outside arm, get his shoulders turned but stay square. And as he's trying to reach us, the big thing I watch in this drill is their base. I don't want to see them cross over. I don't want to see them click their heels. It's because I'm on a typewriter fighting this block. So now I'm fighting the reach. I would like more knockback here, but he's keeping a base because now you can't get washed, okay? And also once you disengage and throw him by you with a rip, you have a square base under control. Real good picture, good job by 44, open the door. His base gets a little bit narrow at times, but that's the right idea. 99 does all this stuff well, not much knockback, but he works to pop his hips, lock out the outside arm. The o lineman ain't giving him a great looks, kind of being a fish with it. Good job throwing him by with a rip, coming to balance. Same thing from a closer view. Already starting to fit, lock him out, work the rip. So now right here, it's the same idea. We're watching number five. He's working an outside movement on 69. So he ends up the way we teach it. Damn near playing like a three technique. He's working the outside shade of the, uh, of the guard. So he's working the outside movement, okay? Gets his hands to his target. He's keeping a base. He's playing the block. Locks him out. And because he keeps that base the whole way through, he's in good position the play the thing this thing bounces in the B gap. Last one here. We got whip playing a six I. And whether it's an outside shade or an inside shade, it's very similar. So now K on right here, he's keying this, the tight end, because it backs away. So now, as he steps that tight end, and he gets no pressure from that tackle, okay, and his target's not great, okay, he wants to collapse this C gap down, okay? And as this tight end works to dig him out, he's gonna essentially steer and push pull with inside leverage. And the big thing here is because he keeps a base the whole way, he's able to control the C gap with his eyes. And once that back declares outside the tight end, he can now play a gap and a half. But if he wasn't keeping a base, he would get washed. He can't do it like that. That's a good, real good picture right there. Last one we got for block destruction, we talked about playing gap and a half. What that means, when we talk about that, we start the drill, the, the D lineman's in the fit. We put the running back directly behind the O lineman. I give these guys a cadence on set hit or hit it on one or two, and this guy tries to reach them. And I tell them they're just running that steer drill. But now I actually give them a ball carrier. So now I point this back on the snap. You either come here to the guard's hip or you press it and come back. So now as we steer this thing and we have our eyes in our gap, once it gets into our gap, we throw by a ripper punch over and fit him up. If he cuts back this thing and we see his heels cross that guard, we now can fall back in, play a gap and a half. So right here. 97's working to reach him. 
We're working to steer drill. We're going to push, pull it. Eyes in our gap. This thing shows. Rip, chest it up. Coming the other way. Work the steer drill. O-lineman sucks. Barely give him a look. Come off it. Chest him up. Now we're playing a gap and a half. 58's working to reach him. Chuck's going to press and cut back. As your eyes are in this gap, you play this gap right here, but your three technique is your B gap. You see his heels cross. Once you see his heels cross, that's when you pop back and fall back inside. So once Chuck's feet cross that, cross that guard, Skylar can fall back inside and fit him up. Same, it's late on the film. He's working to steer 97, Chuck is. The ball cuts back, falls back inside. For the film right here, you got number, I think this is wit. We're watching nine right here. We do a nine technique versus the formation. We're going to get a base block from the tight end. So we want to punch. We're going to set this thing, lock this guy out, keep our eyes in our gap. Once that back's heels cross the inside half of that tight, the back's cross the inside half of that tight end, now Kayon can fall back inside and play a gap and a half on it once he sets the edge there. Now we got five. He's playing three technique right here. I think we end up running a movement. So he's going to run cross the, cross the guard's face. He's now playing the inside half of that guard, but same thing. He owns this A gap. This back's feet cross the heels of that guard. He now can fall back inside. He crosses face. He works to set this thing. That guard, that back declares where he's going by crossing up the heels of that guard. He now can fall back and chest this thing up. Hey, coach. Am I good on time, Coach? Yeah, you got, you got a little bit more time left. It's only Coach Ryan who's on after you. So. Awesome. Okay, then I'm, I'm going to keep going. I got some tackling stuff I'm going to do, guys. Yeah, um, absolutely. Okay, that'll, and then that'll be it. So you guys will have some time for questions at the end, hopefully. Um, let's see. All right, tackling. So right here, guys, and, and with D-line, it's a little bit different. Okay, because we usually we don't really get the open field tackles, and we'll drill a lot of this stuff together as a unit, like like the uh, the low angle tackle, the gator tackles, things like that. Um, but most of the things we get are like goal line and frontal tackles, as we call them, or like outside pursuit tackles. We'll wrap and roll. Um, so the first one we talk about is a frontal goal line tackle. I'm bringing you back to like coaching linebackers right here. We begin the drill tailback you know, defensive player. He's got to get past this white line. We put the ball on the agile. Once he touches it and picks a side, he's got to go that way. He's got to stay inside these cones, okay? And this defender, he's got to mirror him. So if he comes this way, he'll take a lateral step for leverage and then a vertical step with his right foot. That's going to be our strike foot. We're going to strike same foot, same shoulder, bite the ball, club up, drive our feet. And this is a real good picture by Mel. That back picks it up. We have that first step, the lateral step to gather and gain leverage. We keep a base, and that right step is vertical. So we're hitting this thing. We got our head across, hitting the thing square, same foot, same shoulder. And Mel does a really good job of restarting his feet and rolling his hips through. Now, Skyler, okay, big, strong dude, okay? Mel's a tailback. Now, Mel's going to his left. Skyler does not get the same gather step that Mel got. So he doesn't really gain any ground to gain leverage with that right foot. And he ends up striking this thing with no, with no power because his strike foot should be left foot, left shoulder, and he's hitting both of them with that foot back. And he's just in a bad body position right here. But the good thing Skyler does, as bad as his first two steps are and his initial contact is, he has one foot in the ground, he's so damn strong, and he restarts his feet. That's the huge part right there. For much as he is wrong with his first two steps, him restarting his feet are huge in terms of winning the drill. 
Last one by Mel again. He's a natural at this. He's just good at it. That first step is that gather step laterally. And that second step, he's striking left foot, left shoulder. He should have his head across, pads down. That's outstanding by position by, by Mel, rolling his hips, and then working to restart his feet. Now, last one for suit tackle. And this is one that's big for us up front. And I, this really is teaching for, like, if we're getting into the QB and we get, like, jailbreak screen, okay, and we go up the ball and we pursue like we did in line pursuit. When we pursue it and say this is that, that X receiver around the jailbreak, we don't want to over-pursue and let him cut back on us, okay? So now every corner, linebacker, DB is forcing the ball back to us. As we get off the ball, we want to pursue it and tackle and wrap and roll with our head behind, okay? So he can't cut back. And if anything, he's got to flush this thing upfield. So now for the drill, I'll have him get off the ball like we would if we were doing like a line pursuit. And then I'll point one or the other, and they got to redirect. And they're getting – working right towards that pop-up. And this is where D-line get their tackle strips. Because usually that ball is going to be in that receiver's left arm, and he'll work to knock this thing out and won't see it coming. And this is just emphasizing the angles we want to take. So we had times on a lot of these, like, jailbreak screens – where our pursuit angles were poor, and our guys were just trying to beat this guy to where he's going, and this thing would just cut right behind us. Stiff arm tackle, last one we got, guys, we do this as a unit. It happens to D-line, it happens to linebackers, DBs, whatever. Stiff arm tackle. So we start the drill 10 yards apart. We give them a landmark of we put the ball, the uh, guys inside the numbers, the cone at the five, tailback. We have him work to the cone. Okay. Once he approaches the cone, he'll put that left arm up for a stiff arm. The ball carrier, he's going to press the inside hip of the ball carrier. Once that stiff arm comes up, he will now chop it with his inside arm and he'll chop and club up at the all-in-one movement, bringing his hips. Chop, club up. And this proved to be helpful the year went on playing the stiff arms and QBs, backs, whatever. So chop, club up. And here's a couple of just tackling ones, guys. And this is where we get screened to the boundary. You should watch Tayon right here. And I tell the guys would like screen pursuit. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. So he's getting that quick step by the tackle, okay, and he's unblocked. So once he gets this action, this is that line pursuit drill we did earlier. He wants to now retrace and sprint to that white line we did in line pursuit, okay? And right here, Screens, guys, I really believe this. If the offense blocks them up the right way, only guys that can defend it are the D-line. Because right here, they're cracking, they're cracking the wheel, okay, putting the tackle on the back, and they got numbers. So everyone's forcing this ball back to us. So we got to get off and retrace. And Witt, where they got numbers, Witt actually makes a good play. It's only a three-yard gain. And it's the same thing for bubble screens. So right here. They're going to run the, the bubble, okay, right here. So now the first guy, that's a tough tackle for that safety. Open field tackles a fucking bitch. But he forced the ball goes back inside. And right here, just like we taught in that line pursuit drill, get off the ball and flatten. That's all it is right here for number 20. So now he gets off the ball. He recognizes outside running bubble screens, guys, are the exact, almost very similar to the D-line. So you got to get flat running the ball. Um, Rich sends this thing back to us. 20's hauling ass. Cleans the thing up.
that's all I got, guys. Now, if you guys got questions, you know, um, feel free to let me have them. I know, like, for a lot of skill kids, they're probably boring that whole thing. <laughs> uh, but it's kind of a technique-driven position. And if you guys got questions about, like, pass game, which I didn't really get to at all, we can get to another time, um, let me know. Or drills. I, some of the drills we, I have, I don't have film of us doing them, so they want to, like, introduce the drill without me having film of us doing it. Or me having to film from my other schools. Wasn't trying to do all that, but um, any questions you guys got, let me yeah, know. If you guys have questions, just let them fly. Go ahead, Coach. I, I had a question about um, when you tell tell me how you or tell us <clears throat> what your rule is for for your uh, for your nose in terms of shading to the near back or or far. Yeah. So I tell the guys this, and I try and like teach in the fewest amount of words possible is our base alignment for the in three technique and one technique is crotch split. If the back's away, loosen up hand to foot. Okay. Just the let least amount of verbiage possible because typically if the back is to me, I'm going to get a man away block and it allows me to be heavier on that center and that guard can overtake me. If I'm too loose, it's hard to create those levels when he runs away from me. If the back's away, we go hand to foot. The chances are that center's going to come to me, and I have their leverage to play the base to play the base block. And that's kind of our base rule. And we and we tell the ends that end of the bubble. We tell him. We just tell him your base alignment's hand to foot. If the back's away, we alert him to loosening up a hair based off. That's more game plan, but um, yeah. for the inside guys. <clears throat> Thank you. Yep. I got a couple for you, Coach. Yep. Uh, Pre-snap, where did you say that your, your, your D lineman's eyes are focused on? The hip of the man they're on, the guy they're moving to. So if I'm a three technique, my eyes are right in his hip. And cause what I found, too, and maybe it's because I had a hard time for young guys teaching them how to like, – some guys just tee the ball, and I found my kids doing this, you know. So I thought it was easier to teach them to key the hip and just periff the ball. Um, it's kind of easier way for me to kind of teach it, I think. But I know some guys just teach straight, you know, look at the ball, key the ball. But I thought it was easier. That guy, that guy moves anyways, you know, we can go. So any type of movement from the hip area, you guys are? We should, we're triggering, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Right, Coach, that, that's probably my biggest pet peeve when I'm at a youth football game or at any game is when I hear somebody yelling, watch the ball. Cause you shouldn't be watching the ball. Right. You're watching the guy in front of you. When he moves, yeah. he moves. That's, we start that yeah. day, every indie D line session. That's how we start every time. And I do teach and learn, learn how to perf the ball. I think that's important too, especially, you know, I mean, as we kind of get going with it, um, but day one, I'm saying key the man, perf the ball. Uh, my next question, Coach, is I noticed in some of your clips, your defensive ends were 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 attacking the uh, the tight end. They yeah. Hands up on the tight end. Yeah. Is that just a, a a philosophical thing that you're not wanting to allow that tight end to release into a potential uh, passing route, or is it something else? And for what we do for when we play when we play a six eyes, we're playing the inside half of that tight end. We're getting hands on that tight end. And our base rule is based off where the three technique is. Because now that B gap is essentially taken up. So that tight, that stud, I mean, the end to the, his side can be a little bit looser. So we play him, play him through the inside pad of that tight end with a thicker surface to that three-man surface. Does that make sense? Now, yeah. it, to the bubble or the nose end side, I'm trying to think how to draw this up. Um, well, what we do is that three-man service to the nose side, if that rope, that Sam's walked out of the box, he'll give a call to boost the front to a two eye and a six eye so we're not so soft to that three-man surface. Does that make sense? Yes. It's thicken up a little bit. Now, if we have a nine technique, like a Sam backer walked up over there, we won't, we'll play a heavy five technique. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else, fellas, want to get in a question here before we let go? Go. And what I'll do too, guys, I'll put my um, 
cell phone here. And if something comes up, you guys can always hit me up. I got plenty of time right now. Um, you guys can just kind of let me know what your thoughts are, what you got going on, and that kind of stuff, guys. Awesome, Coach. Appreciate it, man. That was top notch. That was great stuff. Awesome. I appreciate it, guys. Take care. Any questions, let me know. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Right, sounds good. Thanks for time, Coach. Yep. Thank you.